I'm going to show you how to paint this atmospheric abstract painting of buildings at sunset. Let's get started. I've wet the paper and I've loaded my brush with the cadmium yellow pail with my flat one inch brush and working my way in the center of the paper here and then just along the horizon and along the water's edge. So slightly different from Nita Engel, I wanna have that yellow there on the horizon and in the reflection of the horizon. And now I'm adding the Pyrrol Red diluted just above. So I'm not actually mixing them yet on the paper, I'm gonna do that by tilting. I'm loading my brush with a cobalt teal, you can use cerulean, and I'm painting it just above the red there in the white space. It is getting a little bit contaminated, don't worry too much, but keep getting fresh paint. Now I'm using the cobalt blue and doing the same. I'm gonna add more cobalt blue later at the top of the sky. Now for the fun part, the tilting. This is where the colors are gonna mix physically without using the brush. Keep tilting each side. This is what Nita Engel does, so don't just stick with one side. As you saw, I added a little bit more cobalt blue. And the reason why the yellow is not turning green is because I've surrounded it with red and the red and yellow will make an orange color and orange and blue don't turn green. They sort of create a little bit more of a subtle neutral color. You may notice an area in the middle of the sky there. It's resisting the paper. It may have had a little bit of hand cream on my fingertips or something like that. If that happens, I'm just using some of the cobalt teal um, with my small size four brush. It's a little bit creamier, so it won't cause any cauliflowers. I've added a little bit of cobalt as well, just to paint over that area. And now some red, just to mix the colors again physically on the paper. So just dropping that red in and letting it run down. If you notice, I'm still tilting my painting, just letting that run down. Now this may not happen to you, so you may not need to do it, but sometimes you may have an area where it's resisting the paint, and it may be just because a greasy mark got onto the paper and it's always good to try not to touch your watercolour paper because this can happen. So what I'm doing now is I'm spritzing the painting. Sometimes the paint doesn't move as much and by spritzing it with some clean water you get you dilute the paint a little bit more and it gets it moving and I'm still tilting and I'm collecting the puddles here with a clean damp brush. So I think it's a good time now to allow the painting to dry flat. So as you can see, the painting has dried here and I really like that light in the sky there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wet the buildings with my flat one inch brush. Now these are imaginary buildings. I am kind of following the photograph, but not slavishly copying it. I'm keeping it really nice and loose. So I'm just adding water in sort of rectangular shapes here very gently so I don't disturb the paint underneath. What I've done is I've squeezed out the cobalt blue, the red and the yellow, the colours that I used for the sky. I'm using a plastic store card cut up and I've mixed the colours physically with the card on the palette, dabbing it in there, creating some really nice colours. One thing to watch out for, which I've learnt my lesson here, the Pyrrhol red is very strong. You'll find red very strong. It's quite an opaque colour and it dominated the blue and the yellow. You may want to use ultramarine as an alternative here, a stronger blue, and squeeze out a little less red so it doesn't dominate the blue and the yellow. And what I'm doing now is I'm just dampening some of those colours to blend them slightly. And I also re-wet some of those areas there. They dried off a little, just in those sort of rectangular shapes. It makes it so much easier to apply the paint with the card. If it, the paper's too dry, the paint doesn't tend to move and it's nice if they can just blend a little bit onto the damp surface. So I'm just sort of randomly painting these shapes using the side of the card, the edge of the card, the long piece of the card, the short piece. And what I'm doing now is I'm spritzing this side here just to soften some of those colours so they fade away towards the edge there, bringing your eye into the centre of the painting. So I'm mixing up some dark greens here, using some Payne's grey and yellow, ultramarine and yellow as well, painting this 
damp into damp actually it's pretty much wet on dry at the top but pushing that into the damp paint there using my size 8 brush so this is the sort of foliage behind those buildings and it's quite silhouetted so you can make this quite dark when you are painting dark colors don't make them too thick you still want the transparency there you want the light of the paper to reflect through otherwise your paintings can look quite flat so what I'm doing now is I'm mixing up here um, various colours using some yellows, a little bit of yellow ochre as well, and just sort of adding that to the foliage colour to have sort of slightly lighter green so it's not, not one dark colour. So just adding some variety there. The sun is going down so it, there is some light still on that foliage. So there are mid and dark greens there. And I'm just painting it now with my size 8 brush going down wet on dry here. Trying to get a straight line by going back and forth. Don't worry too much because I'm going to show you what you can do next when you're going to be creating the reflections. So we'll go back to that in a minute. Just adding a few more sort of dilute dark greens in the background there. So you can use the Payne's Grey and Yellow Ochre or Payne's Grey and Raw Sienna. So I'm tilting my painting now. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my spritzer bottle and just spritz that dark. Now that dark is slightly creamier and it will run down. Don't over spritz and leave some gaps. So just spritz certain parts so you've got the dry gaps in between for the reflections of the sky as well. But you've got some reflections of the buildings. If you're at all worried about this, have a practice of it. You don't need to paint the sky area, but just paint a dark sort of thick line and then practice spritzing that damp paint to see what happens. Keep tilting and then mop any puddles at the bottom of your painting. As you can see there, it's got a lovely atmospheric look to it with those beautiful reflections. What I'm doing now is I'm using ultramarine with some of the red with the plastic card. So again, this is tube paint and I'm printing with the card damp into damp some marks there to describe the buildings windows the straight edge of the outside edge of the buildings you can get quite creative with this you can vary your colors as well you don't have to just use the ultramarine and red you could use ultramarine and burnt sienna Payne's gray and red really mix it up you can also do this wet on dry as well it doesn't have to be damp and I'm just working my way right to left here, varying the marks, looking at the photograph, but also just going with my instincts now because I'm just using that as a reference, but sort of painting with my instincts, seeing what works for my painting. And what I'm doing now is I'm just sort of painting a dark at the water's edge using some of the ultramarine, a little bit of Payne's Grey and a touch of red. And this is pretty much wet on dry and I'm sort of scraping some of the paint up as well, wet on dry, using the card just to create some texture there. Adding a little bit more dark here to the left with the plastic card using the ultramarine and Payne's Grey and then lifting off some of the paint, swiping the plastic card on the water, which is nearly dry. So I've just swiped off and made a few marks there as well. And I'm using my size 8 brush now. It's a damp, clean brush. And I'm just softening some of those marks made by the plastic card. Sometimes when you apply paint with a plastic card, it's quite thick. So I'm just diluting some of those thicker marks. You may not need to do this, but you can blend some of those marks if you like, just to make them look a bit softer in areas. So it's a good time now to allow your painting to dry. Once it's dry, what I'm doing now is I'm using my size 4 brush, painting wet on dry, using the cadmium yellow pail to paint sort of yellow lights coming from some of the windows, which you can actually see in the photograph. So it's got this sort of nighttime look and I'm just working my way along, painting a little bit of that yellow light in the water here and there as well, wet on dry. And I'm using my fingertips here just to smudge that as well to make it look a little bit more like a reflection. Remember, less is more. 
So I'm using a little bit of red now, the Pirol Red, working my way along. I've also added some white here, white gouache to paint some white lights, wet on dry here and there. I won't paint every light. I'll just sort of pick out a few here and there, again using my instincts and smudging some as well. So they look sort of like they're sort of glowing. Painting some white light reflections in the water, wet on dry, using the photograph as a reference here as well. There's some light in the water. If you don't have white gouache, you can use white watercolour or white acrylic as well. So just going back into some of the buildings, adding a few more windows. You can vary the marks. There can be long thin lines, little squares, little dashes and dots. I've actually added some yellow and blue to that colour as well to make it sort of a light green light that I can see also in the reference photograph. Sometimes when you use white gouache, it can sort of fade back. What I find is painting directly over the top of it can help get the light and white back. So you might find that helpful doing sort of another layer directly over the top I'm painting a few more reflections just here and there using my size 4 round brush and I'm going back with the card now wet on dry just adding a few marks here and there some cranes and telephone lines and wires in the sky in the distance you can use the Payne's grey or ultramarine mix with the red there on the palette adding a few more marks on the buildings as well now if you find that a bit tricky you could go back in with your brush to paint some of those wires whatever works for you try to relax and enjoy and have fun it's your painting it won't look exactly my, like mine and if I was to paint this again it would look different the next time so just go with the flow and see what happens So just adding a few more marks here and there, especially around the centre part of the painting where I want to lead the viewer's eye to look. And before I fiddle any more, I'm signing the painting. I usually give it a spatter, but I've decided not to. And just had another look at the painting. I've decided to add a few more orangey lights. So I've mixed up the red, yellow and white together here to create some orange lights to finish off my painting. I've removed the washi tape and here is the finished painting. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial, the fun way of starting using that Nita Engels bullseye technique, mixing the colours on the paper, using a reference photograph as a starting place, but then working into that painting and making your own, using the plastic card to paint the buildings as well. If you have any questions about this tutorial, please put them in the comments section. And if you'd like to support the tutorials that I publish here, on YouTube why not think about joining my Patreon membership you'll get access to exclusive weekly tutorials and downloadable outline sketches thanks so much for watching this tutorial happy abstract painting bye for now